President Cyril Ramaphosa's cabinet reshuffle has had a significant impact on Parliament. The National Assembly Speaker, Meh Tandi Mudise, is now the new Minister of Defence, replacing Nosivue Mapisa Ngakula. To speak to us about the process of electing a new speaker, we're joined now by the current Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Ndate Lichisa Tsenori. A very good evening to you, Ndate Tsenori. I guess, yes, you are the uh, Deputy Speaker of Parliament, but I believe uh, from the 6th of August, also the Acting uh, Speaker of Parliament. Uh, yes, but also whenever the Speaker is absent under ordinary circumstances, that's what deputies do. And in this instance, uh, she was outside the country, so that's how I came into that position. And what the president did was to prolong that. So was there any communication between the presidency and the presiding officers about uh, the possibility of Mayor Modise vacating her role? Uh, no, I wouldn't be. It would be between uh, the speaker herself and the the chair of the National Council of Provinces as the executive authority of parliament. Uh, they would have, I, w I haven't had a chance to talk to both of them. I tried to talk to the speaker and so on. So I wouldn't have been briefed of that. And, and what is this uh, new reshuffling going to affect the ongoing work of the National Assembly? Well, in the first place, uh, reshuffles now and then do have an impact on parliament because principally the president looks at also when they do look at reshuffling of other members of parliament they may be ordinary members or chairs of portfolio committees and or in this instance as they uh, he saw the speaker as one of those so in that sense it means there is um, shall i call it that an impact on the leadership of parliament that level of leadership of parliament and one of the persons was a programming whip so she has to be replaced in that instance uh, so it does impact on the leadership of parliament and so we have to there are two processes underway firstly to replace those who have been taken out of parliament and from and those who have been taken from the leadership of some of the committees so that they are replaced with other people. So there is going to be, in a sense, uh, changes taking place of members shifting from uh, other positions to occupy some of the leadership positions. So the uh, political party involved, the African National Congress, is going to have to deal with those issues, just as we expect that political parties will finalize the candidature for the final decision so that they inform us as parliament uh, to make preparations for the for the elections the busiest people as i speak to you now is the secretary of the national assembly and the acting secretary of parliament and their teams to prepare and look at possible scenarios and given the covid restrictions it it poses a bit of a headache but this is what is being worked through to find what is the best mechanism to meet the constitutional requirements for the election of the speaker to take place? And that necessitate also a consultation with the uh, chief justice's offices, which is going to be continuing uh, as it has already started in the new week to finalize the date and to get to understand the availability uh, of the appropriate uh, person, the chief justice uh, and so on. And, and what are the requisite timelines that these entire processes need to be concluded by? Well, we hope that we can do it within this month. Uh, it's preferable so that we do not have a virtue, uh, or, or if there is, it is in the shortest possible time. So this, we hope, uh, will be agreed to. We will not be forced to go longer. There's no reason, really, for this kind of uh, election to take any longer uh, period than perhaps more than a week or two. Uh, At least this is my estimation. I do not expect it to last any longer than that. Mm. Let, let's change gears for, for just a moment and look into your relationship uh, with Mayor Tandi Mudise. Tell us about how the two of you worked together and what her vacating this particular seat, what impact that is actually going to have 
on, on Parliament. What is it that is going to be missed about her presence there as the Speaker of the National Assembly? Well, one of the important things that happens when uh, decisions such as this are taken is institutional memory. Uh, Memo is um, has had a long uh, political uh, public representative experience, uh, both in Parliament as, a, as part of the pioneering group, the first group of MPs that we were part of, but also as a premier, so provincial uh, government, and then in the ch as chair of the NCOP. That's a very important experience for a person to have in the position such as she was occupying. When you have that uh, historical uh, understanding of the institution, uh, you are not likely to find uh, too many difficulties to arrive at appropriate decisions. So it helps uh, if you have a situation like that. So that's the kind of thing that uh, from her role in the NCOP as chair there, and uh, working with Mebaleka at the time, and ourselves as deputies with uh, Papi uh, in the Northern Cape, uh, so that we could interact as smoothly as possible uh, to do things that uh, we together understood constitute what would be the best way out of uh, often difficult situations. So uh, that's what it means that we lose uh, uh, memory. At least it's not complete loss because uh, going into the executive contributions to parliament remains uh, uh, with us, although from that end of the spectrum. You, you talk about the importance of institutional memory, and that's something that you certainly have, having served as deputy for both uh, speakers, uh, Mambete and um, uh, Memudise. Are, are you ready for this role? Is this uh, a seat that you yourself would like to fill now? Uh, no, no, no. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. That's for, not for me to determine. It's for the people who make decisions about who their candidate is. It would really be presumptuous of me to even suggest whether I'm ready or not. Uh, that's a decision that should be taken elsewhere uh, on the basis of their consideration and consultation with other political parties. Uh, I'm really not able to answer you on that one. All right. Seeing that you're not willing to put your own hand up for, uh, I guess, reasons of, of humility and wanting others to do that on, on, on your behalf, perhaps, what do you believe are the prerequisites or the characteristics that are needed for a person to occupy the seat of, of, of national speaker? Well, I would, I would imagine a, a very deep political understanding of the country's politics, an appreciation of the uh, the the situation we are coming out of in the last uh, 26, seven years. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be completely 27 years per se, but a significant number of years of experience of appreciating those dynamics in the political life of the country so that the political uh, interaction with other political parties is an important part of that process. And so this is what we would expect, uh, uh, because understanding that and having the ability to, to be objective uh, in dealing with matters is an important consideration. Ndadele Chisa Tsenodi, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this evening. Uh, he is the Deputy uh, Speaker for National Assembly in, in Parliament on the processes that now need to take place for the election of a new Speaker now that Metandi Murisa has moved over to defence.